EPL Surveillance Equipment. We're a full service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products. We have 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. We have the largest video library, library bar none, and, and the largest articles, directory, podcasts, blogs that exist online or offline, uh, especially associated with their surveillance and security company, or otherwise known as a spy company. Um, today's um, podcast is, uh, <clears throat> has more to do with uh, the cryptocurrency industry, particularly Bitcoin, as compared to um, uh, spy gadgets and technology. So uh, getting right into it, uh, Bitcoin is an interesting phenomenon that has taken the world by storm since around 2000. Eight or nine, uh, do, since its incep- since its inception, way back then, the world has got a chance to see a new technology, a new innovation, a new take on monetary policy, if you will, that uh, compares to nothing that we've ever seen before, and what what we're up against is something that is really new because it takes advantage of a a number of different things that people cherish the most. (laughs) In other words, when you take a look at a number of economic models, um, Austrian economics as compared to Keynesian economics, where you have one of them, the, the first one, you put a greater emphasis on spending in order to make the economy grow and prosper you have to get consumers to spend. The, the money goes from the consumer's pockets um, and to the pockets of the, um, the merchants, the stores, retailers, banks, etc., etc. And that, that model uh, is predicated upon money changing hands constantly, uh, again, from consumers to everywhere else that we interact with. The other, the latter, the Keynesian, the Austrian uh, economic model has more to do with saving and investing, okay, which is quite different because most people, they have more of a, more of a problem saving and investing. The savings and investment rate in the United States is pretty pathetic, and most people aren't used to the idea of getting a hold of a an investment or an asset class like Bitcoin and actually having something that's going to preserve your economic wealth. Uh, in, in other words, a, a lot of people, particularly those who got into Bitcoin early on, got a chance to see um, what happens when you have an asset class that grows exponentially and it creates a certain type of wealth for you and your family, your business or whatever that is basically hard to compare um, in the traditional financial markets. So what's going on is, um, following again, following the rule of Austrian economics, we have a situation finally where the average Joe Smo six-pack is able to invest and put his or her savings into something and have it grow and have its, have its value preserved. Uh, as compared to uh, what, what you get with this uh, toilet paper currency fiat dollar uh, backed by nothing uh, model. Okay, so again, when you put your money into Bitcoin, and a lot of people are finding out this, finding this out right now, you have something that is not confiscatable, that actually can appreciate and has been the best performing asset class uh, four years running, okay? Now, I admit it is volatile. volatile. It has its hiccups, ups and down, up and down moments, but the general overall trend is that it's been creating a lot of wealth for people, yours truly included. Um, so, so what's happening with this particular killer app uh, that I'm referring to and the game theory model, it's a clever um, feature of Bitcoin that a lot of people are not embracing. In other words, when you have somebody who's 
who has been investing in Bitcoin, either they're doing mining or they're doing some other consulting work or they're just hoarding Bitcoin or even some speculators. Everyone has this tremendous incentive, this psychological imperative going on where they have to protect their self. They have to, there's a self-interest situation going on now. Like, I'll give you an example. Bitmain, one of the world's largest miners, is mining Bitcoin. It, is, it created this um, empire worth billions of dollars, okay? The valuation could be five billion, between five and twelve billion dollars, I think it was, for Bitmain. Um, there's a number of Bitcoin billionaires out there, and everyone has this self-interest now in preserving this golden goose to keep it alive, to keep it prospering, to keep it safe and secure. So I think with Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, this individual, or this group, or this female, this male, I don't know who it is, AI or whatever you want to call it, has pitted us against each other to become self-interested in preserving our own wealth. Now that it's either in Bitcoin or is invested in Bitcoin mining or is invested in um, training and developing people as developers, programmers, coders or something. Now a lot of us have a self-interest to keep this thing going no matter what. Even politicians who start accepting Bitcoin, now they have a self-interest in that whatever happens to Bitcoin happens to them almost because once you have accepted Bitcoin, now you are part of the ecosystem. You are tainted, so to speak, by virtue of your association, okay? You typically don't get involved with something that you don't want to have anything to do with. If it's criminal or something, as a politician, you should stay away from it, right? But there's a number of politicians in Washington, D.C. that are accepting Bitcoin as donations to their campaigns. So it doesn't make any sense at all to, for those individuals to say this is uh, a, a, a currency or, or something only for criminals or whatever, right? Because now you're accepting it, so it's kind of hypocritical. But anyway, the, the invent, inventors of Bitcoin knew this in advance, that this game theory portion of Bitcoin, in terms of the way it operates, is going to pull all these in, disparate individuals into Bitcoin, all of these different groups, all these different races and cultures and wouldn't you, you name it, are all now part of the ecosystem. Now they all have an inherent interest in defending the Bitcoin infrastructure, ecosystem, mission, overall objective, whatever. Now everybody is behind it, right? So it's not a matter of pitting miners against um, hodlers, hodlers against speculators, speculators against developers. Everyone has an integral part to play now that we are all invested, either direct monetary or machinery or human resources or whatever, you name it. Um, this ecosystem is binding us together, particularly the game theory portion of it is binding us together and keeping this cohesive adherence to Bitcoin being prosperous and being successful okay so it's interesting and I just wanted to bring this to your guys attention because a lot of people aren't talking about how the inventors of Bitcoin is using a psychological tool that first pulls you in makes you invest your time your money your efforts and now that you're thoroughly integrated thoroughly engrossed, you've gone down the rabbit hole, so to speak, now you are hooked and you're a part of the Bitcoin phenomenon, whether or not you know it or not, like it or not, agree with it or not, you are now part of this thing and going forward, it's going to be very difficult to unwind anything like this, particularly Bitcoin itself because it's open source and nobody knows who runs it or who, how to turn it off or how to wind it back or anything like that because it's the decentralized nature. So I just wanted to bring this to you guys' attention and realize that um, the 
talents and skills necessary to make Bitcoin work um, is interesting. You have to be very, very good at economics. Okay, you have to know the difference between Austrian, Keynesian. You have to be a very good code coder or developer. You have to know a whole lot about stocks and securities. You have to know a whole lot about technology in, in terms of com uh, computers and the way they operate currently and, and also going forward. You have to know how this game theory aspect is going to have an impact on energy consumption, um, how it's going to impact the psychology of uh, governments who want to control the existing framework, the fiat-based model, how, how they're going to feel threatened and what they can do about it or can't do about it. All of these interplay against one another. And I think the inventors of Bitcoin knew this well in advance that there's going to be so many um, moving pieces and parts that no one single entity has any real control, any real power. If all of the people don't work together, if you don't get this dynamic mix that stays mixed and stays dynamic and, and keeps evolving going forward, that's the important part. The whole project has to keep evolving and going forward because no one knows all of the various implementations of Bitcoin and blockchain and how this thing can play out. There's going to be so many new companies and industries and, and, and innovations. Um, central bankers are realizing that they may, that bank, central bankers may do an end run around banks. As far as central bankers are concerned, they don't need banks anymore. Okay, <laughs> so, I mean, if central bankers can deal directly with people or consumers or whatever, that means I could then have an account with a central bank and we don't need fractional reserve banking, right? Why should I deal with uh, put my money in a bank if the central bankers can use some sort of a, some form of cryptocurrency where I can have an account directly with them, and they can turn my account on and off themselves, depending upon whether or not I pay taxes or not. Contend, depending upon whether or not I'm loyal, or obedient, or protester or not. I mean, all these things become possible <laughs> with cryptocurrency, but not just any cryptocurrency. As far as we're as far as we're Bitcoin maximalists are concerned. You know, they can play around with their country-based uh, cryptocurrencies, but at some point, it all goes back to Bitcoin. Just like the Bitcoin, not blockchain, st stupid argument, pretty soon you start to realize not just any blockchain is a blockchain. It has to be a public, transparent, decentralized, uh, incentivized by Bitcoin uh, uh, rewards type of blockchain, Okay. Uh, so there's a few things that that are going to be uh, made evident and made clear in the near future. And right now we're still dealing with what is this beast? What is this animal? And how much is it going to impact? And how much is it going to change? And how much it's going to, to disrupt the current financial economic models? So anyway, something to chew on. Uh, this is Monty signing off. Doing my... Um, typical five mile walk. It's kind of hot today. Could be 80, 85 degrees, but it's a slight wind every once in a while. But I wanted to uh, make this particular podcast and check in with you guys. And uh, you guys take care and have fun. And uh, as I always say, got Bitcoin.